we kind of like to say that we, we like to speak for, for the deceased. Um, so, you know, we can get justice for them if they were a victim of a violent death. Um, and, you know, the most important thing is being able to identify them, give them their name back, and return them to their loved ones. When we do an analysis, every bone, we look over every surface, make sure there's no trauma. We'll also have, you know, oftentimes carnivore or other types of gnawing on the bones and we'll want to document that as well. We'll look kind of at the shape of the pelvis. Um, if it's like really wide in this area, that is more indicative of female um, versus uh, like a narrow um, opening is more indicative of male. Um, and then um, kind of this, you know, this inlet, um, again, male male on the left, female on the right. Um, and it's just the architecture that's related to having kids. We will also look at um, the ribs for aging. We can look at the medial end of the clavicle. Um, and that's really helps us determine if um, they are you know, under 30 or over 30. So it's kind of like a d dividing point because that's when that um, epiphysis or gro growth plate fuses. And then the cranium is great. We'll look at things like um, the forehead. Um, females tend to have kind of flat foreheads. Males have kind of uh, more receding um, and more of kind of a brow ridge in this area. Um, we'll lack, look at the mastoid processes. Um, again, that's a um, muscle attachment, so it'll be bigger for males generally. We'll look at the chin. Um, and then we'll also look at features of the face in particular and other areas of the skull to help us uh, assess ancestry. And then of course we've got the teeth that we can look at to help us um, for sex and ancestry and age. Like for instance, this individual has their third molars still in the crypt. And so um, as we all know, third molars are not um, they can come out at different times or they can get impacted, um, but that can be uh, an indicator of, of age as well. Um, and then if the person has dental work, that can help us um, identify the person. The pubic symphysis, so again, this area right here, um, how it um, kind of progresses from like kind of this surface that has a lot of waves um, and then as you get older, it starts to kind of break down. So it builds up, builds up, gets nice and kind of flat, and then it starts to, to degrade after that. And then the ribs also go through kind of that system of male and female. So it starts out kind of, we, we like to call it billowy surface, kind of that undulating surface, and then um, it kind of hollows out, and then you start to get kind of this more crab claw morphology the older you get. So we'll just kind of look at all the information that we're provided to try and um, figure out who this, who this person is, if there's any unique features, you know. Even if it's anti-mortem trauma, you know, if this had a nice big like callus or if it was, you know, maybe not aligned correctly and it healed, you know, kind of weirdly, we would say, well, this person broke their, you know, humerus at some point and it looks like, you know, maybe it didn't get set well. It might have been a visible kind of deformity. Um, that could help identify the individual. So all of these things, you know, it's all kind of part of the, the puzzle and part of the mystery trying to figure out who this person is.